Okay. Hey guys, my name is Bethany. I'm the girl behind Well Love Knits, and today I really wanted to focus on beginner knitters. Although I think that this video is something that can be fun as like a conversation for us experienced knitters too, because I want to talk about the absolute knitting essentials. My absolute knitting essentials, because I feel like this is definitely based on the person, but I thought it would be fun to share with you guys what I consider to be absolutely essential in knitting. I feel like knitting can be perceived as a very expensive hobby, which it really can be, but that's why I feel like we need to swap ideas and share what we believe to be the absolute essentials so all the beginners out there can get started without having to invest too much money at the very start for things that they might not need. I know I certainly did in some cases, but um, I have my coffee here. Hope you grab a hot beverage and let's get chatting. Okay, so the first knitting essential is of course the biggest one. It's the most obvious one. It is knitting needles, obviously. But I would highly, highly encourage you, if you think that knitting is something that you will be doing for a long time, maybe you've got one or two projects under your belt, I would really consider interchangeable needles. The reason for that is you will equip yourself with almost everything that you need, most of the sizes that come in an interchangeable kit. They're the most commonly used knitting needle sizes so that you can be sure that you have absolutely everything that you need to get started and you won't have to do last minute trips to the craft store to grab something. So the reason I recommend interchangeable needle kits is that you will have a set of the most commonly used knitting needle sizes for knitting patterns out there. <laughs> wow, that was really difficult to say. So here you can see that I have a lot, here you can, so my interchangeable needle set right here comes in many different sizes. I think the smallest is 3.5 millimeter and then it goes up to 12 millimeter needles. And you can see that I use a lot of these needles. I have a lot of active projects in a range of different sizes. And um, yeah, just being able to have these right in one place and also store very nicely makes it really easy for me to pick them up and go on the go with them if I need to. Interchangeable needles are circular needles that come with multiple cord lengths, which make it very versatile for knitting projects. If you're starting in one size and then going into another from the rib to the body of a sweater, for example, it's very easy just to switch those out and uh, continue knitting. So it doesn't really take a lot of time to switch from one needle to the next. So basically what you do is you take your knitting needle and you use the cords. There are interchangeable cords that come in many different lengths and you can screw them in and uh, secure them tightly so that you can work with them and then change them out if you needed to in rib, for example. Also, having circular needles, I think, are a lot more versatile for many different projects out there because if you just have straight needles, you can only knit back and forth flat. Uh, whereas if you have circular needles, you can also knit back and forth flat but you can also do those in the round projects that you might have your eye on. And just another thing that I've personally noticed is that straight needles themselves can be very rough on my wrists personally or my arms and elbows. So I find that uh, working with straight needles makes your hands go in a certain way that's kind of uncomfortable to knit and work in over time. And circular needles I find to be a lot more flexible so you can have better posture and be comfortable knitting for longer. Having a dedicated knitting project bag I think is really essential for me, especially because I'm somebody who really likes to move around with my knits. So making sure that I have something that can fit my ever-growing knitting projects and also have enough space that I can keep everything that I need on the go is really essential. So here is my knitting project bag. I actually made this one myself uh, using the Allwell bucket bag knitting knitting pattern, it's a sewing pattern, uh, by the All Well Workshop. And this one I really love because it has so many pockets. There's pockets on the outside and then the same amount of pockets on the inside as well. And here it's just a bucket bag so that I can just stuff my knits in there and then just move and close it up like so with the strap. While I also use it as a purse, sometimes there's always a knit in here, <laughs> whether it's a sock or a sweater, it really just depends. And um, in this way, since I have a dedicated bag, I know that the materials that I might need on the go will be in here as well. 
and I don't really have to think twice, I can just stuff my current work in progress in there and then just get going. So of course as you're knitting, there are going to be some smaller items that are absolutely essential as you get working, but it also kind of depends on what kind of project you'll be working on. So I really narrowed down this list to really just the essential bits and bobs, <laughs> I'm calling them. I'm kind of grouping them all together. So this would be your stitch markers, your darning needle, and your measuring tape. So those are the three little accessories that I think that you will need continuously throughout your most basic knitting pattern. So stitch markers are really great, but I'm going to be very specific here because I have used multiple different types of stitch markers, whether that's the really fancy kind, um, stitch markers that are just, you know, a little scrap yarn tied together, or also clippable stitch markers. And the last one is the one that I think is absolutely essential because it is so much more versatile. I find that those really fancy stitch markers with the charms on them, while they are so cute, I don't think that they're very um, practical for all knitting needle sizes out there. So if you're knitting a really chunky project, those things are not gonna help you. I found that knitting with clippable stitch markers, like clip-on stitch markers, are a lifesaver because it doesn't matter what needle size you have. You can clip the stitch marker directly on the stitches uh, if you're keeping count or if you just want to mark the start of a round. Clipping it right on the sweater also makes it really easy to keep track of, so you don't need to worry about it not fitting on those chunkier needle sizes. Then of course the measuring tape and the darning needle, those are just things that you're going to need as you're refining your project. As you're working the measuring tape is essential because some patterns will say how many rows you need to work, but other patterns will tell you to knit to a certain length, which is why having a very flexible measuring tape is very important because it doesn't take up a lot of space and you can just whip it out really quickly and do a quick uh, length check. And then the darning needle, that will just make your life very easy. I don't know how you could weave in ends without a darning needle. <laughs> um, you would have to be very skilled. I think some people do use a crochet hook, but for me, I did it with a darning needle. I have so many of them lying around, um, probably too many of them <laughs> lying around in corners of my house. <laughs> so uh, definitely essential for me to have. Um, let's see, interchangeable needles. Okay, yarn, of course, that is something that's absolutely essential, but that's not part of this list. Then the dedicated project bag. Then we have the three um, little accessories that you will need throughout working. So those five are really the ones that I think you need when you're actively working on a project. So let's go into what happens when you finish knitting your garment. So if you're knitting sweaters and, well, actually any wearable knits, I think that these next ones are absolutely essential. I get asked a lot about how I clean my knits and I hand wash everything that I make because I put so much time and effort into it. I do not want it to get even closely messed up by the washing machine. It's just not, even if it's super wash yarn, even if it says it's machine washable, I will hand wash it. And what do I hand wash it with? I use eco soap. So a really gentle, really nice soft soap that I use only for my knits. So it's probably a little bit on the pricier side than your regular detergent that I, you know, wash my regular clothes with. Um, I use something that's definitely gentle on natural fibers because I really enjoy knitting with 100% natural fibers whenever I can. So washing and having a detergent that is really kind to that kind of fiber is really important to me. Then when your knits are all nice and dry, another essential in my opinion, and actually, you know, apart from the interchangeable needle set, that's number one for actively working on a knitting project. But my second, my first, wait, <laughs> Honestly, almost more important than that to me, if you are knitting, if you are making your own garments, you need to invest in an electric shaver. Knits pill, that is just how it goes. I personally didn't notice until I was making things myself how much knits can really just like shed. It also just depends on what kind of yarn that you're using, but I find 
all of the natural fibers will naturally pill as you wear them and especially the ones that you really love a lot they're going to pill the most because you're getting the most wear out of them i cannot stand pills on my sweater it is something that just drives me absolutely crazy and i do not have the time to just sit there and pick everything off i do not have the patience I like the electric razor and I just sit there and I just, you know, shave my knit just before I leave the house and it's absolutely 100% worth it. I even got something that was very cheap. I think I have something that's 20 euros only and it has paid for itself 10 times over, I swear. So it's really worth the money and I have gotten questions before when I do recommend the electric razor if I'm not afraid that it's going to ruin my knits and no, I am not. I am not afraid because it comes with little holes like the electric razor has small holes on it that won't um, suck in too much of your sweater to, you know, really shred it or anything like that. And you just need to be careful. Just double check as you're going over the sweater just to make sure that everything's fine. Alternatively, you could take a pair of scissors and snip, but um, I don't have the patience for that either. <laughs> So we've talked about essentials when you're actively working on a piece. We've talked about what you need when that piece is finished and needs to be cared for. Next, we need to care for ourselves. And these two I'm bundling together because it's kind of an essential in of itself is to take care of your wrists. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've, I've dealt with wrist pain in the past and it's something that I'm actively working on um, taking care of myself. It's made me very conscious about how much time I spend knitting each day and how I really, you know, work in wrist care into my routine. So there are two things that I would like to share with you that are my essentials. <laughs> said that word so many times in this video that are absolutely important if you want to knit for the long term. So more and more on Instagram, I've noticed that people are talking about how they need to just slow down a little bit more because they used to knit very fast and then wrist pain came in and you know kind of messed it up so that they have to take a little bit of a break. And if that sounds like you, I would also like to share two things that have really helped me out so far as I've been trying to just take care of my wrists. So as I've been talking, you might have noticed that I'm sipping on some coffee right here and I really, really love my morning coffee. It is something that I absolutely need to have every single day, otherwise I'm a nightmare. <laughs> and what I've really been doing now is adding plant collagen into my coffee. This is not sponsored in any way, it's just a product that I really love and I wanted to share it with you. So plant collagen, I just take a small spoonful and put it in my coffee in the morning. What I've heard, and don't take my word for it, definitely do your own research, but it is really good for your wrists to help with your muscles, your joints. Um, it really helps alleviate pain in that way. The one that I use doesn't have a taste, so there's no extra flavoring. I personally like to drink my coffee black, so I can just have a creamy sensation, but nothing that's like too flavorful, which is really great. So just doing a small teaspoon every uh, day has really helped my wrists. I feel like I my joints are feeling a lot better. Um, and it just adds that like extra layer of protection, I feel like in, in my mind, that's how I, I view it. And it's just made it a little bit easier to continually have those wrist movements as I'm knitting. Secondly, I really love compression gloves and I've talked about this a lot on Instagram. <laughs> these are the second pair that I've invested in so I really use these a lot. I use these at night specifically um, or on occasion when my wrists are just feeling a little bit sore or just tired and they need some extra care. Because you're doing that same motion over and over again, I feel like it can be really helpful just to have um, this extra uh, security. It feels really nice and secure. If you've experienced wrist pain, you know that sometimes your wrists just feel tired as well. So these compression gloves have really helped that and I think it's due to the blood flow regulation. It helps, you know, keep your circulation going nice uh, and um, yeah, it just feels really good. So I would recommend both of them. Again, do your own research, but this is something that has definitely helped me. Yes, this was a pretty short list, but that was the point. This was supposed to be the knitting essentials. I really trimmed it down to what I believe to be the absolute essentials for me. Notice I didn't say blocking mats. Blocking mats are something that I personally do not like to use, but 
that's another video in of itself. And I hope that for new knitters out there, this was really helpful so that you don't invest in things um, that you won't end up using. I just don't want you to end up with a bunch of different things that you, you just won't get a lot of use out of. For all you experienced knitters out there, definitely let me know. What do you think of this list? Is there something that you would add? Is there something that you don't agree with? Let's, let's chat about it in the comments. And um, thank you. Thank you for chatting with me as always. I hope you enjoyed. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more knitting and DIY content like this. And I'll see you next week for another video. Bye.